Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in trigonometry. I hope that you've had a good list, good week so far. Well, actually, since today's Monday, I hope that you've had an awesome weekend and that you're ready and rearing to learn some maths. I'm sure that you've had a great day at school as well. Right, so we're going to carry on with the co-function identities. We were doing different identities. We've done 180 plus or minus, and now I want to do the 90 minus and plus. Okay, so they work the same way as they did um, with the 180 minus and 180 plus. And I'm again just proving it to you. So cofunctions are 90 minus and 90 and theta. Okay, it's hard to relate 90 minus theta and theta. So that's what we're doing. We're relating 90 minus theta and theta. So do you agree that if we look at this figure, we've got P and P dash both lie on the circle with a radius of two. We've just assigned it radius two, okay? And as I showed you um, in the last lesson, that would mean that this length here would be root, well, one, it would be root three, and this length here would be root one. I mean, would be one. So therefore, P would have a coordinate of, if we assume that the angle is 30 degrees, sorry, I should have said that I had in my head. So therefore, we can say that this coordinate is going to be root 3, 1. Okay, so P is root 3, 1. Now, P dashed is the reflection of P about the line Y equals X. In other words, we're just using theta, yeah, oh, been away from that angle. But we don't even have to worry about this. If this is theta and that's 90, do you agree that this angle here is 90 minus theta? So you don't even have to look at this fancy angle here. We can just focus on looking at this angle here, this one here, this triangle here. Okay. So let's now do the trig ratios. So we've got, I don't know, green. I'm do, but not this green. So we've got sine theta, we're going to do cos theta, we're going to do tan theta, and then we're going to do sine of 90 minus theta, cos of 90 minus theta, and tan of 90 minus theta, using just this little red triangle at the bottom here, and then see what we get, okay? So remember that sine is opposite of hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, remember it's Sokotoa, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So first we're looking with respect to theta. So sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be a half. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's root 3 over 2. And this is too clumped up, so let me just make it neater for you guys to see. I don't like that it's all clumped up with this. I don't know what I was thinking. Right, let's try again. Oh. Okay, just a second. This thing is giving me hassles. There we go. Tan theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over root 3. Okay, now we're going to look at everything with respect to... Oh! can't believe it keeps doing that to me. With respect to, sorry, I'm really struggling with my new nose bed, um, with this angle. So this was theta and this was 90 minus theta. And I'm just going to go through it again because I have to. So we're looking just at this triangle here. Okay, we're just looking at the red triangle. And we're saying if this is 30 degrees, then this side would be root 3 and this side would be 1 and this would be 90 minus theta if that's theta, okay? So if we do that, then sine theta, just looking at theta, we're just looking at theta, is opposite of our pattern use, so it's going to be 1 half. Cos theta is adjacent of our pattern use, so it's root 3 over 2. Tan theta is 
opposite over adjacent. So it's one over root three. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do everything with respect to 90 minus theta. So again, I'm just gonna remind you that sine is opposite of hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. But this time we're working with respect to the red one. Okay, I mean the purple one. So what do we have? We've got sine of 90 minus theta is again opposite, opposite over hypotenuse. So it's root three over two. Cos of 90 minus theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, that's one over two. And tan of 90 minus theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, so that's root three over one, which is just root three. So what can we see from this? Do you see that we can see that, and let's write this in a different color, that sine theta is equal to cos of 90 minus theta, and sine of 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta. Okay, so sine theta, is equal to cos of 90 minus theta and cos theta is equal to sine of 90 minus theta. Okay, so that's interesting. Now let's look at 90 plus theta and this time we do actually need to think about the fact that it rotates around. Okay, so again, we are going to presume that this angle is 30 degrees, which means that this angle is 30 degrees. So basically we're repeating our triangle and your P and P dashed both lie on a circle with radius two, okay, with radius two. Um, so that two is actually in the wrong place. It should be over here. Therefore, P is, this is gonna be root three and one, okay? And again, then this whole length here, if this is 30 degrees, is gonna be one, and that is going to be, sorry, root three and this is going to be one. So therefore the x value here is going to be negative one and the y value is root three. Whereas yeah, the p value, remember, because that's minus one, I'm just thinking about the length, but this actual thing is minus one across. So then this would be root three, one. Okay, so again, we're gonna do, and do you agree that, sorry, just to point this out to you, that we're now looking at the relationship between sine of theta and sine of 90 plus theta. And what this is trying to show you is that by finding the trig ratios of this little angle here, we're effectively finding the trig ratios of 90 plus theta because they're both described by the same coordinates, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna first just find sine of theta, so we're gonna use purple. So you're gonna go sine theta, I know we've already done it, but let's do it again, is opposite of our partners, which is a half. Cos theta is adjacent of our partners, which is root three over two. Tan theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is one over root three. Now let's look at the sine of 90 plus theta. So again, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So do you see it equals minus a half? Cos of 90 plus theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's just root three over two. And tan of 90 plus theta is up opposite over adjacent, which is going to be minus one over root three. So therefore, we've got some interesting relations that happen here. We've got that sine theta is equal to, well, minus, yeah, sine theta is equal to minus sine of 90 plus theta, okay? That cos theta equals the same as cos of 90 plus theta, and that tan theta is equal to minus the tan of 90 plus theta. And if you think about this, 
Do you remember the cost diagram? All stations to Cape Town. Okay. What's interesting here is that even though the cars, you would assume that the cars would be um, negative and the sign would be positive, you need to understand that that is not a co-function, okay? This is for the co-function. In other words, it's a relationship between the 90 rule. So in other words, we're looking at the vertical line. We're looking at the very, very the vertical line. Okay, so the best thing to do is to learn to do this is to put this into practice. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use some examples and we're going to simplify. So let's get started with doing that. Um, so the first thing I want to remind you is, remember we went back up, that sine theta equals cos of 90 minus theta and cos theta equals sine of 90 minus theta, okay, and tan theta is unrelated. It's only when it becomes the plus thetas that the cos is the same, but sine and tan are opposite in, in sine, if you know what I mean. So cos of 90 minus theta can be written as sine of theta. Okay, we've already learned that. Sine of minus x. Oh, sorry, this is an x. It's an x. Now, we can look at the cost diagram. For this, we've got all stations to Cape Town. Sine of negative x means we're going down by x, okay, and only cos is positive there. So it's minus cos x, okay, all over. Now, cos squared 180 plus x is going to be in the third quadrant. So normally it would be negative cos x, but it's squared. So it just becomes cos squared x. It remains positive because it's squared. So do you agree that one of these cancels with this? So we now have negative sine x over cos x, which equals negative tan x. There we go. Okay, let's look at another example. It says simplify it. Now you'll notice that some of these have 90 minus thetas and some of these have got 90 plus thetas and some of them have got theta minus 360s. What I've done now is I've included a whole bunch of examples that include everything that we've done from the last lesson as well. Okay, so let's go through it. It says, and again, we need our cast diagram. Okay, so I'm sorry about it being skewed. I don't know why. Uh, all stations to get up. Okay, so it says simplify this to a single trig ratio. We'll worry about this now. So we're going sine of theta minus 360. We'll talk about that in a minute. Times by sine of 90 minus theta times by tan of negative theta all over cos of 90 plus theta. Okay, so sine of theta minus 360 is assuming that we've got some angle here theta and all we've done is gone all the way around back to it, okay? So therefore this is just sine theta. Sine of 90 minus theta, remember, becomes cos theta. We've shown it. Tan of negative thetas in the fourth quadrant, so that becomes multiplied by negative tan theta, all over cos of 90 plus theta. Now remember cos was the only one that was strange because it was actually the same as cos theta. So do you agree these cancel? Okay, so what are we left with? Left with sine theta multiplied by negative sine theta over cos theta. Hmm. Okay. So it says a single trig ratio. Sine theta minus 360, sine of 90 minus theta, tan theta, cos 90 plus theta. I'm just checking. So that becomes cos theta. Yeah, that's right. Sine of 90 minus theta is cos theta. 
uh, wait, I might be wrong here. The sine of 90 minus theta is cos theta, I'm right. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of a long day. Theta minus 360 sine theta. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. And tan is sine over cos. That's right. So we're left with minus sine squared theta over cos theta. Okay, that's a horrible question. Okay, now it says, um, so I think there's something wrong with that. So we're not going to worry to do this because you can't do this if it doesn't come out to a single trig ratio. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now they're saying simplify cos of 90 minus theta sine of negative x cos squared 180 plus x. Okay, so what do we need to do? First thing we need to do is realize the cos of 90 minus theta becomes sine x. I think we did this one already. Yes, we did. Okay, problem solved. Okay, let's do this one. 1 minus cos squared a over 4 cos 90 plus a. So simplify the expression to a single trig ratio term. Okay, so let's do this. We have got, do you remember that sine squared a plus cos squared a equals 1? Therefore, we can say that sine squared a equals 1 minus cos squared a. Okay, that's quite interesting. So I can say that 1 minus cos squared a is the same as sine squared a over 4 cos of 90 plus a becomes what? Let's go back up and check. Cos of 90 plus a just becomes cos of a. So if we go down here, this becomes cos a. So now we can rewrite this to be a quarter sine squared a um, and actually that's as far as we can go. That's as far as we can go. There's nothing else to do there. Right, let's do this one. It says, simplify the following expression to single trig term again. So again, do you agree that becomes a one? Sine squared a plus cos squared a is one, solved. Okay, we also need our cast diagram again, all stations to Cape Town. Sine of 360 minus x means that it's going to be basically negative x, and then we go all the way around, so that becomes minus cos x, okay? Why is it a minus? Because sine is negative in that quadrant. Tan of negative x is going to be multiplied by negative tan x. Why is it negative? Because again, we're looking in the fourth quadrant, negative x and tan is negative in that quadrant. All over cos of 180 plus x. So now we're in this quadrant. It still remains cos. Made a mistake. Sorry, I just realized. Sine of 3, 6 minus x is going to be negative sine, negative sine, negative sine of x. Cos of 180 plus x is going to be negative cos x. So there we go. So what do we have here? So do you get minus minus and a minus cancels and you're left with a minus. So we've got minus sine x over 1 multiplied by sine x over cos x all divided by cos x, which is the same as saying sine squared x over cos x times by 1 over cos x, which is sine squared x, this little minus, over cos squared x minus, which equals negative tan squared x. There you go. Okay, let's move on. Now we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to look at proving identities, and we've done some of these before, but some of our proofs are going to be using the 90 plus and 90 minus rule, as well as some of the other identities you've learned. And then what I'm going to do is, okay, yeah. Then what I'm going to do, and we've got a couple more, um, I'm going to start on 
general solutions. Okay, solving equations and then moving on to general solutions and then specific solutions. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But let's do first start with proving identities. Now, the th big thing about proving identities is that you cannot assume the left hand side equals the right hand side. You have to point out the difference between the two. Okay, so sign x over 1 plus cos x plus 1 plus cos x over sine x equals 2 over sine x is what we have to prove. You always start with the side that is got more to break down. And do you agree that the left hand side has definitely got more to break down than the right hand side? So let's start with the left hand side. So the left hand side is sine x over 1 plus cos x plus 1 plus cos x all over sine x. Okay, I don't know why I'm writing so skew. Sorry about that. Okay, so do you agree that we can take a common denominator, it's better, of sine x 1 plus cos x? Okay, and what are we left with? 1 plus cos x goes into this leaves you with sine x, that so becomes sine squared x, plus sine x goes into this and you're left with 1 plus cos x all squared. So do you agree that I can then multiply this out so it becomes sine squared x plus if I multiply this out it becomes 1 plus 2 cos x plus cos squared x all over and this is still, let's still write this as sine x 1 plus cos x. So do you agree that sine squared x plus cos squared x becomes a one? Plus one. Okay, so what do I now have? I have one plus one is two. So I've got two plus two cos x all over sine x one plus cos x. Okay, so now we can take our common factor of two at the top and we're left with one plus cos x and at the bottom we've got sine x 1 plus cos x and we can cancel these and it equals the right hand side yay so there you go okay so grade 11s I have to stress with to you that whenever you're doing these questions you need to realize that it's the teacher unless they've been teaching for a billion years and all they do are trick questions when they start with a question like this they don't know exactly what steps they're going to do to get there all that they know is that they have to do something to get here and they need to follow the maths rules so the first thing we have to do is to try and get this into one fraction so what do we do we use a common denominator so we use a common denominator then we multiply out the numerator we factorize we really do we add up we take out anything that needs to be added we take out our common factors and then we cancel okay so everything i've done here is really basic math obviously i use the fact that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one which is knowledge based for grade 10 and grade 11 but the rest of it was basic 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 grade eight and nine maths with fractions Okay, let's look at this one. This one is slightly different. This time you've got 2 over cos x. So again, I'm going to start on the left hand side. And you guys, if you're watching this live, I really suggest you scream ahead now and do this question with me and ahead of me because this is almost identical to the previous question. So we're going to have cos x over 1 plus sin x plus 1 plus sine x all over cos x. So do you agree we need a common denominator because we want to add these? We want one fraction, right? So we do common denominator of cos x 1 plus sine x. And it doesn't matter which order you do these in. I just tend to put the number, the, the single thing first. That's just the way I do it. So 1 plus sine x goes into this common denominator, leaves a cos x. Cos x plus cos x is cos squared x plus this all goes into the denominator and leaves you with 1 plus sine x. So this gives 1 plus sine x multiplied with 1 plus sine x is 1 plus sine x squared. Right, now what do I do? I'm going to multiply out the brackets. 
So I've got cos squared x plus, let's multiply this out, it becomes 1, plus 2 sin x plus sin squared x all over cos x 1 plus sin x. Say that we didn't immediately make the leap, leap, okay? Do you see that I can look at this and I go, well, I need to somehow get this to be 1 plus sine x. Yeah, we've got cos squared x and yeah, we've got sine squared x. So cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. So I have a 1 plus 1 plus 2 sine x all over cos x 1 plus sine x. Okay, so now I can add that and it becomes 2 plus 2 sine x all over cos x 1 plus sine x. So then we can take our common factor of 2 and we're left with 1 plus sine x all over cos x 1 plus sine x and we just cancel and there you go equals the right hand side. So it wasn't so bad here. Hey? Now, I specifically included a second question that's almost identical to the first one. So that if you are watching this, the idea would be that you would pause the video, I mean, as in not the recording, I mean, not the live, but the recording, pause the video and try this question by yourself first. Oh, excuse me, I'm trying not to cough. Okay, this one, it says simplify without using a calculator. Now, grade 11s, I know, I know students. Okay, you guys are going to all go, how will they know if I haven't used a calculator? Really? I want you to try and type cos of x into the calculator and see if it works. Okay, yes, you could probably get away without using this as a cal without using the calculator for this, but there's really no reason for it, okay? Watch, I'll show you. Do you agree that that would be the same as saying sine of 90 plus 27 degrees all over cos of 27 degrees? Ah, plus, and now this lot I need my cos diagram for. It says all stations to Cape Town. Okay, so now let's think about that. What do we have? Um, we have that um, cos of negative x is in the fourth quadrant, so that's just going to be cos x. Tan of 180 minus x is in the second quadrant, so it's negative tan x. And sine of 360 plus x is really just saying, okay, I've got angle x and I'm going around 360 degrees, so it gets me back up here. So that is the same as saying multiplied by sine of x. Okay, so now sine of 90 plus 27, do you agree is the same as cos of 27? So this just becomes 1 plus cos of x we can leave alone. Tan of x becomes minus sine x over cos x. Okay, multiplied by sine x. This cancels with this and you're left with 1 minus, whoopsie, sine squared x, which is equal to cos squared x. There you go. Nice and easy, right? Right, now let's look at this one. This time we have to prove again, we're looking to prove that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. These are all questions taken out of our old exam papers. That's why they kind of look like this. Um, and then what we're going to do now is we're obviously going to play with the left-hand side. So we're going to go left-hand side. And we obviously want a common denominator. So I'm going to go, wow, 1 minus sine x, 1 plus sine x. So if I had to put that into the denominator, I'm going to end up with cos x multiplied with 1 plus sine x minus cos x multiplied by 1 minus sine x. Agreed? Okay. So then do you agree I can take out a common factor of cos x? Cos x. And what am I left with? I'm left with 1 plus sine x minus bracket 1 minus sin x and please don't forget your brackets otherwise you might end up with not getting out the right answers. Now let's multiply this. This is actually the sum and difference of two squares. So it becomes 1 
minus sine squared x, okay? Because it's a plus and a minus, the middle term disappears. Okay, so this becomes cos x, then it becomes 1 plus sine x minus 1 plus sine x all over 1 minus sine squared x is cos squared x. Agreed. So now, do you agree that cos x cancels with one of these? So 1 minus 1 goes away, and what are we left with? We're left 2 sine x over cos x, which equals 2 tan x, which equals the right-hand side. Ta-da! There we go. Easy peasy. Not too bad, eh? Hey? Right, now we need to look at solving general solutions of of equations. So what I want to do is basically we want to solve these and then I'm going to show you how we are looking at solving general solutions. Okay, so you must remember when you're doing trig that the trig graphs go on and on and on forever. Okay, so for example, sine graph does this, right, more or less. Okay, it just keeps on going. So if I worked out that sine x equaled a half, now remember that this year would be equal to one, the amplitude is one. If I now said that sine x is equal to half, do you agree that, oh, I did it again. I don't know what's going on. Okay, okay. So again, here's my sine graph, okay? So sine x equals a half, I'm scared to choose a color now. Okay, there we go. Would be something along the lines here. So do you agree that all the way along this bit here, this bit there, all the way along, it's going to equal, sine x is going to equal a half because that there is the y value of a half. Now, obviously, that means that a sine graph generally has a period, well, it has a period of 360 degrees. So in other words, it's going to be that angle plus 360 degrees repeated. The, that gap there is 360 degrees, right? And that angle plus 360 degrees is going to give us everything. So we know, first of all, that sine is positive in two quadrants. Okay, it's positive in the first quadrant and positive in the second quadrant. So when I say sine x is equal to a half, I know that it's going to happen in two quadrants, in the theta and the 180 minus theta quadrant. Secondly, I know that it's not going to repeat it. So I'm going to take the first angle and go, but look, it's been repeated every 360 degrees. And then the second angle is being repeated every 360 degrees. So let me show you what we're going to do, okay? So let's start off by just solving this, okay? So we want to prove, we want to find the general solution for 2 cos squared x plus 5 sine x plus equals 4. Now, obviously, that looks like a trinomial. We can rewrite it as 2 cos squared x plus 5 sine x minus 4 equals 0. But the problem is this cos squared x. But we can rearrange that because we know that cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x, right? So therefore, we can say that this is 2 times 1 minus sine squared x plus 5 sine x minus 4 equals 0. So if we multiply this out, it becomes 2 minus 2 sine squared x plus 5 sine x minus 4 equals 0. Okay, if we rearrange this, it becomes minus 2 sine squared x plus 5 sine x minus 2 equals 0. I hate solving trinomials with a minus in the front. I'm going to multiply everything or divide everything by minus. So I get 2 sine squared x minus 5 sine x plus 2 equals 0. Right, so now I need to solve my trinomial. So my coefficients of my x squared or my sine squared x is going to be 2 and 1. My coefficients of the, well not the coefficients, the last values are 1 and 2. Both the signs have to be the same and they both have to be negative and they have to add up to 5. So 2 times 2 is 4 and 1 times 1 is 1. So you end up with 2 sine x minus 1 or sine x 
minus 2. Okay, because remember you write it out across like this. Therefore, we can say that 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0 or sine x minus 2 equals 0, right? Therefore, sine x is equal to half. <laughs> what a surprise. Sorry, just a flock. I didn't, I didn't do it on purpose. Or sine x equals 2. Now, sine x cannot equal 2. For a basic sine x graph, the amplitude is 1. So therefore, this is not valid. So now we're looking at sine x equals a half. Okay, now listen. Do you agree that if we go use our calculator and we switch it on and we go shift sine of 0.5 close bracket equals we get 30 degrees okay so the reference angle the reference angle is 30 degrees that means if i had to draw the cross diagram and i'm going to draw it over here we're looking at the angle of 30 degrees or of 180 minus 30 degrees. Those are my two angles that work for this, okay? So it's, in other words, that angle there and that angle there, this one is at 30 degrees and this one is at 150 degrees. Therefore, we can say that X is equal to 30 degrees or X is equal to 150 degrees. Why 150? Well, 180 minus the T is 150. But now we haven't finished because now we need to account for the fact that the period of the wave of a sine wave is 360 degrees. And we haven't missed with the period, okay? Um, and we need to take into account that there are, as same with this, 150, and it repeats itself everything. So we go 30 degrees, plus K360 or 150 degrees plus K360. So that is why we are taking this into account. Okay, right. So that would be the general solutions. General solutions are just telling us that the original angle is 30 degrees, but then it's every 360. And the K stands for either plus or minus one. You need to remember that this graph goes this way as well. So this graph would continue this way and you would have an half values on this side as well. They'd be there and there and there. So in other words, it'd be plus 360 or plus two times 360 or plus minus 360 or minus three, two times 360, okay. Right, now let's look at this one. This is slightly different. I think I'm going to, just a second, here we go. I'm going to go for this one because this is a little bit more different. And hang on, let me just see if there's an easier one that we can do before I do. I'm just trying to see if there's an easier one. Okay, let's do this one here, okay? This is pretty easy. We again got a trinomial, okay? So if we had to solve it, they already got it in the trinomial form. We've got two and one, one and one, we want minus two plus one. So we end up with two cos x, okay? Um, plus one, and then cos x, minus one equals zero, okay? Therefore, you've got cos x is equal to minus a half or cos x is equal to one. Okay, so we've actually got quite a few solutions going on here. Cos x equals one. Do you agree that cos, that would mean that the cos is positive. So it's all stations to Cape Town. So we're looking at the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So if we look here, we know that the reference angle is going to be what? So if we go, you guys should know this, but let me just show you. It's shift cos of one should give you zero because the cos graph starts up here, right? Remember that? So it's going to be zero, okay? The cos x equals negative a half, that is going to be in this quadrant here, okay? So obviously this is going to be zero or 360 degrees, okay? 
because it's either going to be zero day or goes all the way around 360. The reference angle for this side is going to be shift, shift cos of 0 0.5, close bracket equals 60 degrees. The reference angle is 60 degrees. But remember, we want it in the negative quadrant. So therefore, it has to be over here and over here. So effectively, your angles are going to be, X is going to be 180 degrees minus 60 plus K360, okay? Or it's going to be X equals 180 plus 60 plus K360 degrees, okay? So therefore, we can say that this is 120 degrees plus K360, or it is X equals 200 and what is that, 40 degrees plus K360. Okay, so now let me explain what's actually happening. What we are saying is, What we are saying is that your cars graph is going along like this, okay? Oh, it's a horrible cars graph. Let me just start again with the cars graph. Oh, I've run out of time. Okay, grade 11. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to carry on with this on Wednesday, and I'm going to start with drawing the cars graph so I can show you exactly what we're doing. Have a great day.